I had a few questions here about the smart meters. Um, are they are they starting to be installed now in BC? I know it said summer of 2011, but uh, yeah, we expect our first meter to be installed in July, John. Okay, uh, and that's starting. Uh, that's going to be province wide. What's the expected finish date or completion date? Uh, end of December 2012. Okay, we'll have uh, the vast majority of them completed. Yeah. Okay. Are there any uh, areas or regions exempt or? No, I mean, you know, our intention is to cover 99% of our customers. Uh, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always that last 1% that's the most expensive, and it just doesn't become cost effective. So there'll be a, a couple of areas of the province that are very remote that we won't be able to cover. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, now, uh, with billing, um, I understand that. I'm just uh, reading a little here from you. Um, the, the intention is not to access any customer's real-time consumption. Um, can BC Hydro guarantee that that's not going to occur in the future? Is that a permanent thing? or You know, as far as, far as I know, uh, that's a permanent thing. That, uh, we, don't, we actually do not have technical access to that information. Okay. So if a customer had an in-home feedback device in their home because they were interested in how much energy they were consuming on a real-time basis, yeah. Um, they would be the only ones that could see that. Uh, we would not have access to that. Mm -hmm. It's all encrypted and all that other stuff, much like online banking. So even with the, I mean, it says only customers who choose to take advantage of in-home feedback devices will have access? To uh, real-time data, like, a, yeah. like we just talked about. But there will be customers, that, every customer that has a smart meter will be able to have, free of charge, mm -hmm. access to a portal uh, a website that will allow them to see their uh, daily individual usage on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. Mm -hmm. So that's not considered the real-time usage that BC Hydro could potentially have access to? So that information is what we'll be basing our bills on oh, I see. in the future, so yes, we, we clearly need that. Um, okay. okay, now, uh, what was the, uh, what was the uh, reason for going to a, a, a wireless meter as opposed to a wired meter? Well, good question, John. You know, we looked at a variety of, of technologies uh, that would best fit the makeup of our province, uh, the, the, the unique characteristics of the topography and the customer density, uh, and we evaluated actually a power line carrier technology. Uh, but, but the costs were simply prohibitive, John. They were uh, orders of magnitude, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars more, uh, frankly, to use that technology uh, than uh, the one that we employed. Also, it, that technology had, had some significant limitations with regard to some of the uh, additional smart grid functionality yeah. uh, that would be leveraged off of the backbone that we build. Um, and, uh, and clearly that, uh, that is of long-term interest relative to our grid modernization strategy. Okay. Yeah, because um, from, from what I understand, TELUS has actually stated that I'm um, going to something like a fiber optic, for example, wouldn't cost more than a wired a wireless system. Do you have the the data showing the uh, the assessed increase in cost of going to a wired system? Yeah, I don't have that handy, but uh, uh, there have been several utilities in the states that have started with fiber or broadband over over power line, and they pulled the plug on those programs. Uh, it's simply way too expensive. Uh, the, the concept is nice, but in practicality, John, it just wasn't working. Right. So, because uh, I understand it's iTron that has the contract for BC Hydrometers? You bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just looking here. I have um, a copy of their uh, annual report uh, from, I believe it's uh, 05 or 08, and it's, it's, uh, it's stating that um, they actually can, can use the, a wired system. It's, it's possible in the iTron's technology. Uh, what they're probably indicating that their meter may be compatible uh, with another vendor's, you know, um, communication system, mm -hmm. uh, but that is not being offered in the market. And frankly, our recent discussions with them have indicated that a power line carrier type solution that may address some of the rural uh, communities that I spoke of yeah. uh, is on their roadmap, but they're not willing to make any commitments about uh, when it would be available. Right. Okay. Uh, but clearly that's of interest to us, if there's uh, some unique circumstances where that technology would be beneficial. We're, uh, we're we're leaving that on the table. I see. Okay. Now I I understand there's a quite a bit of uh, protest over the wireless meters from a group who uh, 
have, I guess it's called electrohypersensitivity. Right. Um, yep. Yep. We're, we're certainly aware of a um, uh, of a small local uh, community okay. of people that have concerns about RF, and you know we try to uh, answer their questions and have been very proactive around that. Okay. Um, yeah. No. We uh, we spoke with. Um, BC Hydro a few months ago, and they, they said that they would be willing to work with people who did have these uh, sensitivities. Uh, has there been any progress on what exactly will be done? or? You know, we're actually going to uh, do that on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Um, f first of all, John, we're not going to uh, force meters uh, down on people that uh, have, have these kinds of concerns. Uh, we'll put those folks on to the end of the program. Uh, we're looking at alternatives. There's a number of things we could do, um, and we re really want to discuss those particular, you know, um, alternatives, uh, whatever with whatever the particular situation is of the individual. I see. Okay. But there, there, because I, I understand. I'm just reading some some data from some of the open houses. I guess there was um, some talk of putting a panel together to address uh, some of the issues with these people uh, to work out a solution. Um, yeah, I'm not aware of, of a panel, but, but clearly the lines of communication are open, John. We're not yeah. uh, saying we won't talk to you. Okay, I see. You know, and we, and we just keep saying the same message. You know, I, I understand your, your concern, but 20, 20 years of exposure to a smart meter standing next to it is equal to one 30-minute cell phone call. I mean, that's the, that's the difference between, uh, you know, the kind of RF technology that's become commonplace and, and a smart meter. It's, uh, we, we help people try to put this into perspective. Right, okay, yeah. I've spoken with some of these um, people who have these sensitivities, um, and I, I think some of their worries are that, um, that I, I know that BC Hydro states that uh, the emissions from the meters would be, uh, well, minimal, so to speak, uh, only lasting a few minutes at a time, but uh, their fears are that, of course, it will they'll be going uh, on a more constant basis Right, and that's, that's simply not true. In fact, the architecture does, does not allow that. The, the meters only communicate four to six times a day uh, when they're requested to send information, and for a total period of like 53 seconds on average. Yeah. So this is, again, this is like uh, way, in the, way in the background of, uh, you know, uh, the kind of exposure that, uh, you know, they might be concerned about. Yeah, okay. Could a possible uh, compromise be that uh, Hydro would install a, a wired meter, similar to some of them in Ontario, uh, for these hypersensitive people? Or you know, we're we're looking at all all those options, John. You know, I, again, we're we're not insensitive to to those issues, yeah. um, and and uh, we're we're going to find ways to work with that that power line carrier technology. Okay. If that becomes available and it's cost effective, we'd be all over that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so sure, we're. You know, we have an open communications with, with regard to people that have concerns. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, I know the recent, I think it was just last week that uh, the World Health Organization, uh, well, they, the, the data has been coming out that they have linked cancer with cell phones, for example. Um, yeah, so yes, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, significant exposure to cell phones got yeah. the, the designation of uh, possibly carcinogenic. Right. Yep, which is... Uh, you know, it joins the ranks of coffee and styrofoam cups and pickled vegetables. Yeah. You know that are also on that list. Right. Uh, but but again, you know, our meters, you know, are, are below uh, the lowest standards of, of of the strictest standards in the world. Uh, so even those that are based on the precautionary principle that yeah. is often used by some of these folks, uh, and Switzerland has standards that are based on this precautionary principle. Mm -hmm. We're below that when you're standing eight inches from the meter. But as a, as a consumer, a concerned consumer, I mean, why would I want to have any risk, let alone a small risk? I mean, that's, I think, maybe some of their concerns. Yeah, yeah, and then you have to get into the, uh, you know, helping people put things into perspective. You know, we're exposed uh, to uh, known carcinogens every day from the sun, and yet we have found a way to adapt because the risk is obviously low enough for us to uh, be comfortable with the consequences, right? Mm -hmm. you know, some people are more sensitive to others, and they adapt their life accordingly. Well, you could put these meters on the on the you know the whole spectrum of potential exposure from RF, and this thing would be at the low end of, of any any reasonable uh, technologies that would employ that. Okay, yeah, because we have here uh, 
BC Address Health Advisor actually admitting that, well, not admitting, but saying that he doesn't want to hide behind uh, Safety Code 6, which is Health Canada's. Well, you could argue it's a contentious uh, code because it, it seems to be out of date, and even Blatherwick admits that. Um, well, for sure. I mean, standards, uh, standards like that are always being reviewed. And, you know, every year uh, data is being reviewed and those standards are updated. In yeah. fact, uh, Professor Blatherwick, uh, you know, basically said that, you know, over 30 years, 25,000 studies have been done, uh, and none of them have uh, linked uh, in, a, in a, uh, a definitive way uh, RF to uh, cancer. But the World Health Organization does list uh, electromagnetic radi radiation as a carcinogen. I mean, clearly that right. And and and, then I, and I caution everybody to take you know the soundbite and and don't read the article. Mm -hmm. You know, to again put that in in, in perspective, and again put uh, cell phone use into perspective with what we're talking about with smart meters. And clearly, we're not even in the same you know the same ballpark. Okay. Uh, just switching gears for a quick moment. Um, I understand that. Um, a large reason why Hydra has argued for smart meters is due to theft of uh, hydroelectricity, uh, namely at the hands of the, uh, the marijuana grow ops and whatnot. Um, just reading here, it seems that the numbers have have, have, have uh, reported as theft from BC Hydro have, have varied quite significantly over a few years. I mean, it goes from theft ranging in 12 million to 30 million. Now it's at 100 million. Um, has it really been changing that much over a mere few years, or are the numbers uh, verifiable? Uh, the the uh, we're very confident and comfortable that the numbers we have today, uh, the hundred million dollars per year which is being stolen, um, is conservative, mm -hmm. um, and at the low end of the range. Um, and the numbers have changed over the years, um, John, for a couple of reasons. Uh, when we first started to look at theft, and frankly, at the urging of BCUC. We simply did not have a good handle on the magnitude of the problem. Okay. At that time, um, in fact, it was the uh, BC Chamber of Commerce back in 2004 said our estimates of hydro theft from grow ops is between 100 and 200 million dollars a year, and we said, well, we think it's 12. Mm -hmm. Well, we just did not have our facts together. In fact, since then, we began a concerted effort of building up our database, mm -hmm. and we've converged on this number through through several different ways. Uh, engineering studies of line losses, um, studies uh, that we've done with the RCMP and Dr. Plekis in our own internal database, which has grown substantially. Mm -hmm. And we've converged on a number that we've, uh, we're have we confident and comfortable in. Um, and one, one last thing is that in 2006, uh, when uh, the Safety Standards Act was enacted, um, a number of grow-ups uh, began to, you know, start to steal electricity instead of pay for it. Uh, to avoid detection from the municipalities. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a huge driver, and that caused some of the acceleration. Yeah. Well, speaking of theft, um, I, I know that Hydro is, is confident in the security of the, of the wireless systems, but uh, would not a, a wired system like iTron offers uh, be absolutely more secure than a wireless system? You know, I, I, we're, we're very, very confident that uh, the system that we put in is is very, very secure. We have a defense in depth strategy that is second to none. Yeah. At every component, uh, the way data is encrypted and sent, this kind of um, air traps that we put in that prevent uh, upward uh, introduction of viruses up, up into our, our technology. Yeah. I mean, we have this uh, so well understood and nailed. And you know, and you know John, we're, we also uh, have brought in ethical hackers, independent, to actually challenge um, the security of our of our solution, I see. and we'll be incorporating their concerns. But mm -hmm. you know, no system is 100% secure, and we keep learning and adapting and putting in place uh, you know the steps to uh, evolve as a uh, as the potential uh, you know um, threat evolves. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, just uh, one last question here: um, uh, smart meters are they going to be for small businesses, restaurants, uh, type stuff? Yeah, industrial. absolutely. Yep. Every every uh, distribution customer in the province, um, uh, commercial, uh, industrial, and uh, residential will have smart meters. Okay. And uh, yeah, there they're a, a, a potential uh, a significant u user of that information to help uh, improve their their uh, energy usage in their bill. Okay. All right. Now 
I guess um, I guess it's kind of an ongoing thing, but with the uh, with the regard to the EHS people, uh, Hydra is going to continue to communicate with them on on options. Uh, you bet. The yeah. Open house and whatnot. No, we will continue to communicate with those folks, and uh, we do, um, and we'll we'll keep the, keep that up. Okay, sir. Thanks very much for your time. I appreciate Good. it. I hope it was helpful, John. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Best okay. of luck. We'll see you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.